This is We The Sales Engineers Podcast, show 134. Welcome to We The SE's Podcast, the show for sales engineers by sales engineers with your host, Ramsey Majaba. What's up, SE Nation? Welcome back to another podcast episode. Thank you guys for being here. I truly appreciate it. I'm thankful that you, like, I'm seeing that some people are make, getting use out of these podcasts. These are useful for some people. Um, hopefully a lot more than what I'm seeing, but I appro- I'm appreciative of everyone who's sharing these on LinkedIn or privately. doesn't really matter as long as whoever you're sharing it with gets some use out of them. So thanks again for being here. Today, I had the weirdest podcast episode ever, mainly because I jumped on a call assuming that I'm going to be interviewed for somebody's podcast. Turns out I was doing the interviewing. And I interviewed a couple of guys, Tim Brom, uh, I hope I didn't butcher the last name, and Jan Eric from Sales Excellence Podcast. And we basically jumped on. We didn't have anything to talk about, really, other than why start a podcast. I personally believe it's fairly important that we have some form of side hustle whether it is to make a little bit of money on the side or to help you advance your career, which is what we, the SEs is it, it's the purpose for it was for me to learn. And it's been good for my career. I've been able to meet some great people and I've been able to improve my sales engineering capabilities, which I wouldn't have been able to do without this podcast. Other people start side businesses, like they teach basketball or football or soccer uh, on the side. I just believe it's very important to have something like that. And that's why I wanted to talk to Tim and Jan, mainly to understand why they started the podcast, how they started it, and what it's done for their career. And if you enjoy this type of conversation, let me know because... I haven't done content about how to start a podcast, but if that's something that's interesting for you or how to start a website, let me know. I'm I'm happy to do that. It'll be a welcome change uh, from talking sales engineering for a bit, mainly because I feel sales engineering can help you with many aspects of life and a lot of things that happen to us in life shape the way we do sales engineering. So... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's talk to Tim and Jan. (laughs) All right. So we are recording. We've been talking for, or we've been trying to talk for like 30 minutes. So welcome, Tim and Jan. Is it Jan Eric or Jan? Oh, Jan is completely enough. Jan is completely enough. Welcome, Jan, completely enough to the show. (laughs) (laughs) Who are you? Let's start with uh, Tim. Um. Because a second ago, Jan just said, I'm just a stupid manager, so I don't know if I want to start with you. Uh, let's start with Tim. Who are you and why are you here? Yeah, firstly, thanks thanks for having us, Ramsey. Um, it's it's a pleasure. We've been obviously also following your channel for quite some time now, so it's good that we finally find some time to connect. Who am sure. I? Well, I'm a 36-year-old German living in Munich, originally from Berlin, with a passion for technology, video games, and Formula One. Formula One. All right. Nice. Not many of those here in Canada. How about you, Jan? Yeah, I just need to say that describes Tim very, very well. Okay, good. It's, it's exactly Tim. So you will be surprised. I'm also 30, 36 years old, also based in Munich at the moment, but will move away from Munich in a couple of weeks to the countryside of Germany. So back back to the roots, if you will. Um. And yeah, I also enjoy video games. I would say different one than Tim Tim do. Um, and I will not share any more details about oh. the video games I, I, I like. Um, and we talked about soccer. So I like soccer. I played soccer for, for a very, very long time. And uh, at the moment, there's not a lot of so- soccer we can play. So I'm still playing for um, a company team, uh, which is more like, yeah, to have some fun, right? So it's not like we, we do it in a professional way or we train a lot, we just get together and then um, we play a little bit little bit of, uh, of soccer. And then um, there is uh, my little dog uh, and his name is Godzilla. 
uh, he's really a beast. Um, and I've spent a lot of time with him, which is also a lot of fun, as Tim we can have to highlight. tell. Yeah, true. It's, it's a lot of fun. And <laughs> one didn't pronounce that funny. The dog does not have the D in it. So obviously we know the Japanese monster, Godzilla. Yeah, yeah it's got, Godzilla. It's Godzilla. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's weird. Do you have a it picture? Is. Do you have a picture? I oh. want to put it on my show notes and compare your dog to Godzilla. You can do that. You can do that. I mean, so the reason why we gave him that name is not about the size of the dog. It's more about the mentality because he's a terrier. Okay. All right. Well, full disclaimer, I am 36 years old as well. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So a bunch of 30 middle-aged men talking about podcasting today. So welcome to the show. I think this is the first time someone's calling me middle-aged. I'm depressed now. Well, welcome to the club. When did you turn 36? In April. Oh, so you're older January. than me. You guys are both older than me, so you're even more middle-aged than I am, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> um, I, I'm okay about that. You know what? So my girlfriend uh, is turning 30 next year, right? Okay. And she's already telling me, oh, you will be 40 very soon. And I'm like, I'm okay with that. It's just a number, but you will get 29 plus one next year. Yeah. So yeah. That will be fun. Yeah. My wife wasn't happy when she turned 30. Not that she is 30. She's never going to be 30, but that's a different <laughs> story. Yeah. So, all right. You guys have professional mics in front of you. Anybody watching this on YouTube, you'll notice that both Tim and Jan have very nice looking microphones in front of them. And there's a background behind you guys that says sales excellence. So why do you have these microphones and what is sales excellence? So who's supposed to answer? I'm wondering. And since I'm already talking, I'll just continue. Yeah, go of ahead. course it's you. It's you yeah. because it started, it all started with you. So you need to share that story. I can, I can share the origin story, right? So, um, yeah, sales excellence. That's that's the name of the the podcast that Jan and myself are hosting. We I think we have been doing it pretty much at the same time as as you're doing yours, uh, Ramsey, since uh, two and a half years now. I think you have way more episodes because we're a bit more lazy than you, obviously. But uh, that being said, it's definitely a passion project of Jan and mine. So it's something we do on the side. We are full time employed, but we still we still love to talk about these things in our private time. And it all started. Um, Basically, when, when I met Jan, when I started working for him, so Jan hired me. I don't know what happened there, but yeah. probably the biggest mistake of his life, but I started working for him and he was my manager and we shared a common office in Munich. Um, and during that time, especially in the beginning, first six months or so, I was learning really a lot. Uh, and so def I'm not, not kidding here. I, there was a very steep learning curve for me. Um, I think, and Jan can attest to this, probably it was more the reason for general mindset that he hired me as opposed to my knowledge on technology. So I had really a lot to catch up there. Um, but during those times, we sat around in the office and always brainstormed around, okay, how do we pitch this part of the software? How can we address this pain point of the, com of the customer? And uh, a lot of talk about methodologies and, and way to demo and PowerPoint and other mediums such as whiteboards and, and software, of course. And at some point I said, Jan, these conversations that we're having here, if you would have had me sit next to this, observe this conversation about 10 years ago when I was starting out in this role, it would have helped me a tremendous amount. So why don't we just hit the record button whenever we come to this next conversation and just put it on the internet? And that's, that's really how it started. Okay. And can I add to it? Because yes, I agree every single day I'm asking myself why the hell I hired that guy. No profanity on the podcast, Jan. Un, un, unbelievable. And so the second point, and I think this is this is really important. So I said at the beginning, I'm just a stupid manager, but I truly believe, so when, when I hire people, I always look at the mentality of the people, right? So the attitude and the, the soft skills, if you will, because I truly believe that is much more harder, if not impossible in some cases, to teach or coach or train. Um, but making people familiar with your technology, right? And, and explaining, hey, this is how our software works. And these, these are all the functionalities you, you can leverage. I think this is the easy one if you have the right person um, to, together with you. So um, that was always my kind of guideline if I'm looking for um, new people on, on my team. Um, and uh, so I need to say that podcast would never have happened uh, if Tim wouldn't have asked, right? Because he, he said, we are lazy. I mean, I'm totally lazy. 
in comparison with Tim. So he was always the kind of, of trigger and say, let's get that started. And now we're doing it for two and a half years. And it's just incredible, right? Because um, we have the ability to share our experience and our knowledge. And it's, it's, it's not completed and will never be complete. But what we have learned so far and experienced so far, we're happy to share. Um, and, and that's just great. So that's giving us already a lot, I would say. And the other part is, and that's the same with you, by the way, we're meeting so many cool and great and knowledgeable people um, from the industry who are also passionate with, with pre-sales and we can extend the network and, and learn more and uh, share more information being on your podcast and, and all that stuff. And this is uh, still, I would even say unbelievable to me, right? So two and a half years ago, you, you would have told me this will happen. I would have said, never right and now here we are and still enjoy, enjoying it doing something for the community yeah this is uh exactly the way i feel too like i get to i would never have talked to two people from germany who live in munich i i don't i don't know why would i talk to these guys but you guys have a podcast i have a podcast we got together and the same feeling goes for a lot of people and i want to talk specifically about podcasting but before um, what were you doing, Tim, before you became a sales engineer or pre-sales engineer? Yeah, you could argue that I've been doing it since the beginning of my career. Um, it was, I mean, recently, I think, was it James Cakers or, or someone else who said to me, that is probably the most straightforward pre-sales engineering career he has ever heard of. Um, <clears throat> because I, I studied, well, electrical engineering and computer science in university and funny enough the reason to do that was in fact my passion for video games because i wanted to understand okay i have this cartridge here and here's the console i put it together and all of a sudden this awesome stuff comes out how does it really work and uh, and i did in fact learn these type of things in in university and then i, I joined a german mittelstand i don't know if that's a word you use in english uh, like a medium size kind of not medium size they are 10,000 employees or so, but technology company so, based in, in Munich, Germany. So small company. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've worked for SAP, so that's a different yeah. ballpark. But anyway, so I joined them. Uh, I went abroad for five years in South Africa and we basically did solution sales there, right? So they okay. recently underwent an acquisition um, and they went from a product to a solution based a company basically. <clears throat> and I was part of that transition. And so it was always around technology but connecting also with customers from from the first day at work really yeah and, and Jan, how hard was it for tim to convince you to record these sessions oh, it was it, it was not hard um because i i like the idea and i think it's uh, sometimes much easier if you can do it as a team right so if it's not only you who need to motivate yourself and, and all that stuff so if you are together as 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 we are uh, then I feel it's it's far easier to to get started, and I like the idea from the very beginning. And then uh, we just had a, a MacBook in front of us, and we hit the record button. And if you listen to our first couple of episodes, uh, the audio quality is just horrible. <laughs> so, okay. but that is how it started. All right, so you started off with a MacBook. When how did you figure out the uploading the podcast like what, did, what research did you do and the reason i wanted to talk to you about this is because i want people to think about side hustles that can actually improve their careers right we are not talking about sales engineering today we're talking more about side hustles and i want to figure out how you started and why you became that and how that's helped you throughout your career I th we already discussed that uh previously uh like separately to talk about. So how did you figure out the technology like beyond just MacBook first? Yeah. So maybe just a, a, a side mark here because you, you, you asked what, what is the reason? I think that the initial reason is uh, what, what Tim already said, uh, like, okay, we already have some experience and we gathered some knowledge and uh, we thought it could be useful um, for, for the crowd to, to hear that. Right. And it's, I think it's still our main motivation. Um, all the other stuff we, we will, I guess, talk about later, later today, just, just kicked in and is, is good and we enjoy it. But uh, the main motivation is still that we just enjoy sharing our experience and, and knowledge and believe that it could be helpful for, for other people. Yeah. 
So on, on that other part of your question, uh, Ramsey, in regards to technology, I would say for us, I mean, the, the, the medium podcast obviously is relatively low in barrier of entry. So yeah. if you're going YouTube or whatever, you have to consider, of course, not only voice, but also what you're showing. So podcasting is relatively easy to get into. That being said, there are some technical hurdles also, which Jan and myself took. I think we have changed podcast hoster, hosters uh, three times now or something. So the, no, this is the third one. So we've changed twice. Okay. So we went uh, from, from a very cheap one to a medium sized one to then now a more professional one. So it's definitely worth spending some money on this because it just makes your life easier because there is some administrative efforts to creating a podcast. I mean, you know this yeah. probably better than us, Ramsey. But um, yeah, definitely the case, but it's manageable um, in terms of, so that that's the hosting bit. Um, then of course, in terms of equipment, you talked about the microphones. I think we bought these, I don't know, maybe after the first year or so. I think the, initially we did it on a MacBook, then we had like a little, like a Jabra box, but it didn't sound too great either. And then at some point we, we bought a couple of microphones um, and these nice attachments here, which makes it just more convenient. Yeah. And they sound good. In fact, I'm using those on sales calls as well when I'm joining prospects. I mean, and people compliment on it. They see this thing, they say, wow, what a fancy microphone, whatever. And obviously it sounds quite nice as well. So I think also it just makes you come across more professional. Um, yeah, and I think the last piece um, that, that made it a bit more professional, which I have not on right now because the lighting is still good. It's a, like a lighting ring. Uh, which yeah. makes it then, if we do a re in fact record uh, a video here and there, makes it look a bit nicer. So, what host are you using today? Podigy. Yes, Podigy. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a German German based company. So, if if yeah. someone in, in Germany listens to to that episode here, uh, I think Podigy is a is is a very good uh, hoster or, or provider. Um, yeah. But there are a couple of us based ones um we also we also looked at uh, but finally we said okay we live in germany let's uh, let's go with a with a german based provider here okay i i uh i've used lipson since day one and it's been okay to me it's not the fanciest ui or anything like that but it gets my podcast uploaded and shares it with different people which is basically what i'm looking for and Main what, thing here yeah yeah what is the mic that you're using right now? Do you remember? Uh, is it the Rode Podcaster? I don't remember the name, to be honest. No, it's not the Rode. no, it's not the Podcaster. It's just a Rode NT USB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it is. Sorry. So it's a U U USB, just very easy plug and play, right? You can just put it uh, everywhere on, on your Mac, on your uh, yeah. Windows machine, on your smartphone, what, what, whatever, whatever is needed. I have the ATR2100. Uh, I like it. The problem is it has this on off button. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, I was doing a video with my manager um, for like, we had a conference and he wanted to do a video and I put this microphone in front of him. And at the end of the thing, he had moved it around and we noticed that when he moved it around, he clicked the off button. Mm -hmm. So basically Be careful. If, a full day, yeah. So if you get a microphone and you can get one without an on-off button, I would say do that. Now, so what have you seen in terms of rewards? Like, how has that improved your relationships with others, your career, if it has in any way, like doing the podcast? Yeah, I think there's a couple of aspects here. So for me personally, um, and, and I'm sure Jan has his own opinion on it, uh, for me, the biggest reward is whenever someone is texting us either via mail or maybe LinkedIn and says, hey, Jan and Tim, I've listened to this in this episode. Um, I've learned so much from it. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you, occasionally we get these ones. Um, those ones are the ones that make me really happy. And whenever I do get one, I copy paste it and send it to Jan in case I just received it on, on my own. Um, I think for me, that, that is the biggest reward. Um, of course, when people then, for example, engage on LinkedIn on the actual episodes, we post every episode on LinkedIn, of course, and sometimes there's good feedback there, which is great. Um, and the, the second aspect, which is maybe not the primary reason, but certainly one reason uh, why we're doing it is to sort of be potentially perceived as someone, as an expert or status, uh, has a certain expert status in, in that realm, so to say. Um, I would say that does happen. Um, I mean, I changed, 
I changed um, employers at the beginning of the year and during the recruitment phase, the podcast was already running, running for one and a half years. And that certainly came up during the conversation. Hey, you, we saw you doing this and this, why are you doing this and so on. So it definitely uh, helps with the perception of, of, um, of expertise, so to say. Yeah, well, at, least, at a minimum, it shows that you've taken the initiative. And that's, that is something that sales engineers, like you'd hope a sales engineer has like initiative. So at a minimum that what about you Ian? Is, do you do you see it differently or more of the same i wouldn't i wouldn't say i see it differently so to add to to tim's first uh, first topic i think also when we receive um kind of challenging feedback right so i listened to the episode but but i have a different opinion um this is also very valuable to us because then you can have a conversation about it and maybe uh, you, you 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 really get the chance uh, to invite another person to the podcast and and talk about it from from another angle. So also that is received in a very positive way from from our end, um, definitely. So I agree on these, um, and I think the the third component is that uh, we really have been able to grow our network, right? Mm -hmm. So you talk to a specific person and then that guy is, for example, saying, hey, you should definitely talk to, to that guy because he is an expert in blah, 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 blah. Um, and, and then it's, I mean, I can't really explain it. It's, it's just happening, right? And people reaching out to us where I never thought that they would contact us, right? But mm. it's happening and uh, it's, it's just amazing. So that pre-sales community is kind of very close and very open. And I think they appreciate if people um, do a little bit more, right? And, yeah. and, and putting that podcast on, uh, on the table and, and whatever, and then they are willing to, to join and share their experience and, and, and provide their knowledge or maybe join, uh, join you on a, on a team meeting and collaborate a little bit. So I think that to me is also a real benefit because you, you get much more expertise around you and, at some point you run into an issue or a specific question. So you have more people you could uh, potentially ask and, and get some, some help from. Right. So speaking of uh, disagreeing with people, I had an interview with someone a couple weeks back. Her name is Amanda Rico. And we talked about resumes and you know, you're familiar with infographic resumes. Mm, yeah. I have a rough, idea probably so, very visual yeah it's very visual um yeah looks looks nice i don't know about the content so i don't really like it and someone reached out to me today who's a recruiter for se's and se leaders and he said i have a counter argument for that and i've written a blog two years ago or a year ago mm -hmm. so right now i just shared his blog so people can actually make their own decision and he's going to be on the podcast which is, you know, basically what exactly what you just said. Someone disagreed with what I said, and now we're going to have a discussion. And in terms of being an SE, I'm going to learn and grow from that experience as well, because now I can, maybe I'm not going to change my mind 100% about infographics, but maybe I can use some of the stuff that I'm going to learn from him. And I think that's a big thing. I feel for myself, I started the whole podcast because I didn't know if I was doing the right thing. And the biggest benefit I've had is getting better at my job, right? Also, you know, finding a different job, getting like working on different technologies. So yeah, I, I agree pretty much with everything you said. Yeah. In fact, we haven't even uh, really, really spoken about that bit, right? Because I mean, for, for every episode um, that Jan and myself are doing, there is, I would say substantial preparation going into it. Huh? Um, I mean, we have done, well, the majority of episodes are interview episodes, but with every interview guest, we go through a yeah, podcast episode creation life yeah. cycle, so to say. Yeah, So we have a rough template where we then put some ideas in and then we develop like a rough conversational path. And all of these activities, they do exactly what you just said, Ramsey. It basically makes you, it forces you to think about certain topics, which then obviously you can also apply in your own job because in the end we often, well, we pretty much exclusively talk about things we do in this role, which we have ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's, it's a learning component for sure. And I would say that is definitely also one of the reasons that I wanted to do it because I knew if I gonna start something like this, I will have to force myself to become familiar with certain topics because I don't want to talk crap, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and then I will learn as a result of it. 
Yeah. I it's guess we, we, we missed that one, right? When we talked about what, what are the reasons. Um, yeah. But you're right. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a huge one. And especially if we do these interview episodes, I think we learn a lot with every episode, right? Because you get a different view, you get introduced to new techniques and tools and all that stuff. And for us, it's, I mean, we are not doing the podcast because we believe we know everything, right? Um, we're doing that, that podcast of, because of the reasons we, we mentioned and we're still learning every day. And I think that, that is part of our mindset, right? So uh, we will never end with, with learning something. So and every kind of episode, any kind of feedback, comment on LinkedIn, whatever, is uh, an opportunity for us um, to learn something new. And, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I go the opposite route than you guys. We, we've had, we jumped on a call and you guys wanted to prepare for the interview. When you're interviewing me and you guys had, you know, very explicit, you guys are well prepared. On the other hand, I'm like, do you guys want to talk about podcasting? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so, it also works. yeah, it, it, it works different. Different people that work differently. Um, yeah. and, but I, we still learn a lot from the podcast, like from talking to people. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and I, I really enjoy, I mean, we're doing it right now, right? But, but I'm really enjoying it because I'm the, the person who, who gets interviewed by you, right? So it's kind of easy for me because I can lean back and I wait for your questions and then I just pick up and, and give, you, give you my answer. So I, I really enjoy that kind of, uh, of format. I think when Tim and I are the hosts and, and doing something, then we just need that way to to prepare it right because that's at the moment our style doing it um and i I think that's a good example so you can't say okay this is the better way or that is the better way um we do it in different ways and both ways are are working fine right so as long as we feel good with it then it's absolutely okay yeah Uh, yeah so go ahead yeah, yeah, there's just one question I would like to ask you, Ramsey, if you don't mind, because one thing that... No, this is my <laughs> podcast, I get to ask the question. Go ahead. And it's, it's, a, it's a funny one, because, I mean, Jan and I, were having these conversations, and most of the time it's an interview guest, and then, of course, we're leading the conversation, we're recording it, we're putting it up as a show. Sometimes, and I know Jan doesn't do it as often as I do, but sometimes I do listen into older episodes. And the funny thing is, I sometimes learn something from our own episodes, because maybe something some interview guest said there within the conversation that I didn't pick up during the time we had the conversation. But now that I have, can exclusively focus on what is being said, I can see it in a different light. And then I think, oh yeah, this is what he was talking about. And then I actually learned something from, from their own content, which is a bit, I don't know whether that's narcissistic or whatever, but it is like that, yeah. Well, it's, it's like reading a book. Sometimes you read a book at the wrong time and you don't learn anything, anything from it. You come back to it a year later and it's like, everything's clicking right so so it just sometimes takes time to digest and yeah i listen to the podcast uh mainly because i want to like do little bits and post it on linkedin but whenever i'm listening to it i'm like oh he actually said that or she actually said that i I never when where was i oh i was thinking because when you're sitting in a podcast especially when you're like me and don't really prepare ahead of time i'm thinking of the next question that i want to ask sometimes so sometimes i miss something it's good to go back and review but yeah like doing go ahead yeah it makes makes you appreciate um those guys on tv that are doing professional moderation of of tv shows or whatever shows um it's really an art to be able to firstly formulate an intelligent question but also reflect on what your other conversational partner has just said of course it's an art that you also need in presets in fact right yeah yeah it's, it's, it's also very much in customer engagement you need it so um, it's definitely, definitely not easy. So, but, I, but I also think with that, uh, we improved a lot, right? Over the two, two and a half years. Um, so I can remember when we, when we scripted the first episodes, I think it was much more structure and much more research at, at the beginning because we have been maybe insecure, right? Or, un, or unsure about what, what we are doing. And I think now we found kind of a... Um, of, of a basic structure we, we always uh, kind of reuse and we can more focus on doing it, right? And enjoying it. Um, and I, I also believe in that respect, Tim and I, we are completely different, right? So one of us needs maybe more structure. The other one doesn't need or doesn't want a lot of structure. And um, that was also interesting to figure it out between the two of us, right? So finding our way, uh, which works for, for both of us. And, I think after two and a half years, we, we really figured it out for the moment. 
So who who needs the more structure between the two of you? <laughs> I think it's them. De 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 definitely me, yes. <laughs> For sure. Okay. And so how did you guys deal with that? Like, do you, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you this uh, question. I'm hoping for an honest answer. Does Tim get on your nerves when he wants so much structure? And actually, Tim, does Yang get on your nerves when he's ready to just go without any structure whatsoever? Uh, let, let, let me start. Okay. Let me start. Yeah. So I think first of all, and that is, that is very important. First of all, I think we really um, respect each other. Right. And uh, we really respect that. Um, whatever the other guy is doing is um, highly valuable um, for what we are doing, doing together. So to answer your question, um, I would say no. Um, I think at, at the beginning, it was a kind of discussion. I wouldn't say, Tim, you're going on my nerves, right? Um, putting all that structure into, but so we had discussions around it. And now I think we, we really figured it out and uh, we have that um, yeah, very kind of professional respect for each other and see the benefit in it right because the, the the fact that tim is so structured and and also kind of hey we need it right and we maybe need a little bit more today it's good right because i don't see it sometimes um and uh the second part of the question i let tim answer yeah so i mean i I don't think I've ever been annoyed in that sense. I mean, Jan is very annoying, let's be honest, yeah, but, but not, not in that sense. <laughs> no comments. And, and I would say um, we, we complement each other quite, quite well in that regard and play off each other's strengths and, uh, and maybe <clears throat> soften up each other's weaknesses, so to say. So, yeah. I think uh, due to, as, as Jan mentioned, due to the respect we have for each other, uh, there, there's no really annoyance. Or something like that it's just constructive collaboration. Do, you, do you find any similarities between your relationships together and se relationship with salespeople? I, as you were asking the question earlier i had that uh, thought that there is some parallel to it because obviously if you have an ae that you work alongside on a regular basis um and typically these people have a different personality profile and skill set, um, which very much is idea to complement with the SE role. So for sure, uh, sorry, I say SE because I'd exactly it's solution consultant, but I'm talking about presets, obviously. Yep. Um, and there, there is some parallels here, but that being said, of course, both Jan and myself are pre-sales people, so that yeah. analogy only goes so far, but um, I think there, there are some parallels. Yeah, but I mean, and I said to me, that's, that's important, right? So, um, I think it's not unique to sales and pre-sales relationship or to what Tim and, and myself do, uh, doing. I think you, you should always try to um, walk in the shoes of that other person, right? And try to get an understanding how the other person is looking at, at, at the stuff. Uh, because that helps you to better understand the other person and, and also seeing hopefully the benefit in it, right? Um, I think humans in general we are very very quick with complaining about something and complaining about other persons and i don't think that's useful right so get 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 in touch with with people try to understand their view and and and, and find some benefit for yourself right and this is what i would expect from the people i'm 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 dealing with i i i really believe that's that's important when it comes to relationships not only in business yeah uh, like i know i've struggled sometimes with complaining about salespeople, or at least uh, like one or one of my salespeople. And sometimes my manager had to tell me like, shut up and grow up and go talk to them. <laughs> so yeah, no, I get it. And that's where great, uh, great managers or not so great managers. I don't know what you are yet. I think you kind of, you kind of make yourself seem like not so great, but I'm pretty sure you seem like a great, uh, great manager to me uh, since you're doing a podcast with uh, Tim. But yeah, like it's kind of interesting how you can work on that. Um, I, I did have a question, but while while I was talking, I forgot it. So that's the problem. With <laughs> that's okay. Um, that happens to me sometimes as well. <laughs> is there a topic that you guys love discussing on the podcast? Many, as you can hear. Hang on. Let me have a sip of my delicious tap water. Okay. All right. All right. I'll have some too. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yeah. So, I mean, you mean in, in general or something we haven't talked about and uh, want to talk about because in, in general, I think one of our kind of most 
important topics, if you will, is, is definitely, I would say relationship, right? So how to engage between sales and pre-sales as well as with Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Customer um, is, is really, really important. And in that respect, I would say, especially discovery. I mean, that is something I, <laughs> I could talk about for years uh, if, if, if you don't, uh, don't stop me. So I think these yeah, kind of relationship between people and how to make the best out of it plus discovery would be my two favorites by today. How about you, Tim? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's no accident that I think, was it even the first episode where we talked about discovery? <clears throat> one of the no. first one was value selling, but episode exactly. number two is, I think, discovery. So it is. De def definitely a, a key component, yeah. Um, that is for sure a favorite topic. Um, I also would, I, I have actually written a LinkedIn article on, on the topic um, because I also wanted to learn a bit better and understand it better, the difference between qualification and discovery. So obviously the two yeah. go to some extent uh, hand in hand, but I think they are still distinct, which is actually the title of the article. Um, and um, I mean, I see it over and over again, and that's basically a consistent theme across the past 10 years of me being in, in technical sales, that qualification is underestimated and often many resources are being uh, put into deals that are actually not really closable at this stage. So, and obviously you should have a good idea that you can close something before you even go into deeper discovery mode. And, and that I think is the, the crucial piece to the puzzle. And, and maybe the, 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 the thing around it is, is really kind of be value driven or um, act in a value driven way or however you would like to call it. And yeah, customer centricity customer centricity and creating good relationships and do proper discovery, I think is essential, right? To, to be able to be customer centric and uh, have a kind of value driven approach and, and pitch at the end of the day. Yeah. Nice. nice. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. I have an entire podcast where I interviewed, uh, you're familiar with Chris White? Yes, of course. Yeah. So Chris White. Absolutely and... not. Who, who is that guy? He's just a guy. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, we we, we know we, we, we know Chris we, we know Chris very well. I would say <laughs> greetings. Yeah, Chris is gonna hear that and he's gonna come and punch me in the face. But that's okay. Uh, yeah. That's okay. So I have a, I have a big face, so I have room to spare. Uh, yeah. But I had a I had with him him and Scott Cassidy. And we all we talked about was customer centric selling. So it was an interesting topic. So all I these topics. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was I was about to say, you know what's not customer centric? Quarterly pipeline management. Oh yeah. yeah. But we still do it every single day. Well you kinda have you kinda have to balance the customer versus the organization. Like you have two customers basically. Every SE has two customers, the actual customer and then the sales team, the and the organization as a whole. At least that's how I feel. Oh. Where, where do you see the future of Sales Excellence Podcast? Where do you guys want to do as we keep going? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting one. And there is uh, certainly people coming up to us on a regular basis and asking, hey, when are you doing this for lead generation or are you turning this into a business and so on? And the answer is it's not on the immediate roadmap. Um, it obviously it, it could be used for that, uh, at least as a marketing medium to say, Hey, here's Jan and Tim and they pretend to know stuff. So maybe they can do some consulting work. <laughs> yeah, so it, it could definitely go in that direction. That being said for me personally, I think maybe Jan has a bit of a different view on it. I'm not so sure uh, I, I would like to go into that sort of consulting trainer coaching type of direction. Yep. Um, it's uh, maybe it's not for me really. Uh, that is a path, though, for sure. Uh, we have also contemplated potentially, um, and I think we're not the only ones uh, <laughs> attempting that, to sort of go for a, at least we discussed it. I mean, we didn't really go for it. We discussed a business model where you could say, okay, let us provide maybe digital products, such as like an online course or maybe yep. like, a, like, a, like a digital book that you can purchase or whatever. Um, but uh, we are, I would say at this point, quite far away from that. Okay. No. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean, know. I guess we should uh, record an, a new trailer like, hey, sales excellence, two sexy 36 year old. <laughs> so, I'm kidding. I mean, I'm, I'm completely, I'm completely with Tim. So I always say 
Sales Excellence Podcast for us is it's just a big playground, right? And we're playing on it for two and a half years already. And we're still enjoying it. We, we're having a lot of fun and uh, we're trying, we're just trying out a lot of new things, right? Um, and I, I guess that is the status quo. So we will continue exactly exactly that uh, that way with, with, with the podcast for now. So to summarize, the podcast has helped you help other people get better at their jobs, has helped you get better at, their jo at your job, and has, pro has helped you maybe in getting newer jobs. Does that sound accurate? A good summary of the benefits of having a, at least a sales excellence podcast? Yeah. I, okay. I mean, I would definitely, I would definitely agree to, to those statements. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. So it, it is time to move on to the not so fire round. These are four questions we ask almost every guest, but I'm going to change it around with the focus is not sales engineering. The focus is podcasting. Mm -hmm. So starting with number one, usually Benny asks this, but because I didn't tell Benny we're interviewing today because I didn't know we were interviewing. <laughs> It's all about preparation, you know? Yeah. This is how prepared I was. I showed up to a meeting and said, hey, am I interviewing you or are you interviewing me? And it's like, oh, you're interviewing us. I'm like, all right, perfect. Let's start. Uh, so what do you love about podcasting? And we'll start uh, with uh, Tim. Sure. Um, <clears throat> So I'm, I'm going to start with a hashtag bromance. Uh, firstly, I really like uh, I like it because it means I can spend some time with Jan, and I really like him Aww. as a human being. So, <clears throat> and it's it's always a quite a productive and constructive conversations we have there. Jan is blushing a little bit. I don't know if you no, I mean it. it's 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 funny. It's funny because when you asked the question, my my first the first answer in my belly and my and my brain was actually, I can spend time with Tim. <laughs> Oh, so it, going it is. Now. We have to stop. It. I'm going away. It, <laughs> it is. It is promance, right? So, and people, please, please Google promance. It's uh, uh, it's very interesting. I feel like I it's need to leave. Thing. I feel like I need to leave and leave you guys alone. <laughs> I don't know. We need to get a room. Yeah. Uh, Social distance. Oh my goodness. All right. Anywho. Okay. So, um, next thing. Uh, did Did you want to answer? Is there any more answers to this question, or we're good? Uh, well, I, I think I think I can probably talk half an hour around the question why why uh, it's it's fun to do it, but that is certainly one one of the reasons. And I think many of the other reasons we have already discussed here uh, why why it's uh, fun for us. How about I put it this way? If you, if you didn't if you weren't talking to Jan, what other reason would you have to do the podcast? Yeah, um, I think, well, to be honest, I got into the podcast medium when I was uh, early 30s. I didn't produce my own podcast, but I discovered it as a medium for me to learn, really. Um, so, I, but I mean, we, we get back to what, what we have already said, right? It's, it's about giving something back to the community because I used podcasts to learn myself a lot. I mean, for, I used it specifically in the beginning to educate myself on, on financials. So how can I use my money in a smart way to get myself a bit more freedom in that regard. And uh, I've learned a lot of things. And obviously, I mean, there's oh, so many finance bloggers, podcasters out there in the US and also in Germany, it's ridiculous. So obviously that's a playground that's completely settled. So I figured, okay, what can I do to give something back to someone else that I know? Um, and no, so that, that was one of the ways to do yeah. it. And to, to get more to the kind of uh, technical things, maybe uh, I think it's a very, um, you can consume podcasts in a very easy way, right? Because you just need to listen to it. So you can do it uh, when you go to work or when you're driving or whatever, right? Cleaning, cleaning up your flat. So I think that this is one thing I really like about it uh, because that also means for us as, as the producers, we just need to take care of our voice, right? Because that's, that's the only thing the, the consumer will, will hear. So there's no video and you can, you can be a little bit more focused on, on what are, are you doing. Um, and for us, it's at the end of the day, very easy to produce, right? So it's not rocket science um, and you don't need a lot of, lot of equipment. I think this is, this is also one aspect why we decided to do it as a podcast and not as a YouTube channel. You do know that this is going on YouTube as well. Right? Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. We also, we, we also publish our podcasts on YouTube. I mean, without video, of course, but. Oh no, we're doing video. So everything you've done so far, 
So the fancy background <laughs> at least pays off. Yeah, that's and, that's and the okay. Fact that Jana and myself are both wearing a super dry shirt, which is excellent. <laughs> well, coincidence, I should say. Not yeah. Yeah, it rep represents super dry. Okay, I don't know what super dry is, but you you guys are representing it very well. <laughs> so, is there something you would change about podcasting in general? Oh, that's an interesting one. So, I mean, I think podcasting still has a way to go to become more professional. Uh, so, what, what I'm lacking or what I'm missing a little bit. <clears throat> as platforms like uh, YouTube where large channels can leverage the platform to actually also use it for, um, for, for business, right? I mean, you yeah. get these channels and they have maybe 100K, 200K subscribers. And by that point, it becomes financially viable to actually have a, to, to be standalone, right? And then you right. have channels, of course, like, that go into the millions and that's, that's through the roof. Um, there is the occasional platform already out there where you can basically have episodes behind the paywall, but it's like very, it's like an island approach. There's a portal over here. There's a portal over there. It's not, not something that is fully embraced by the market as a whole yet. It's, it's very yeah. punctual. And what I find most annoying is that uh, on every single device, you will find probably, I mean, there's iTunes, there's Spotify, there's Google Podcast, there's whatever. There's so many different platforms out there. And it's all quite heterogeneous, um, which is a good and a bad thing because, well, obviously it, it drives innovation, but it um, means it's more difficult to have a channel where you can just cater for all listeners. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and I think Spotify and Amazon are going in that direction, right? I mean, Spotify has now channels that are exclusively only on Spotify and the creators are yep. actually getting paid for it, which is nice. But I also don't like the fact that it's... Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't go that, I mean, we're way of way of completely away from, from being at that point that we would be hosted by, by Spotify to get paid for it. But um, I wouldn't like it if it was because that means only people that are using Spotify can listen to us and that also sucks. Yeah, and they're in control of your whatever they want to publish and not publish. So uh, I suppose. So. Yeah. How about you, Jan? Yeah, I mean, I think to me, um, as Tim mentioned, we are on all these different platforms, right? And if you open up... Uh, our podcast on different platforms it it, it 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 will come across in a different way right so mm. we put it into our our hosting platform and there is a nice markup language kind of standard way to do the description in the show notes all that stuff and then you have platforms are able to um, interpret it in the right way so it looks nice formatted and all that stuff and then you have other platforms and it just looks like crap yeah yeah that's happened to me someone reached out to me and told me like there's one application which i can't remember what it was that does not show my art like, the work that i put into my art it does just does not show it and i haven't had the chance to sit down and try to figure that out just because it works on everything else and you know so i think there is some some work to do especially for um for for, for the platforms to kind of okay let's agree on a standard right that uh podcasters can can really uh, kind of trust us that it will uh, come yeah. across the the same way uh, independent from from the platform because you put a lot of sense in it and it yeah there is a reason why you have a, a specific format to your show notes to make it easy uh, for the consumer to read it and consume it and then they fuck it up completely at some point right so, profanity again yeah. yeah i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to bleep that one out uh so so yeah good. i was i was hoping for a moment that that i can can do that so hey right. it's red i'm happy to make you happy all right next question is there a resource you would recommend for someone who wants to start a podcast uh, we'll start with the end this time uh i mean honestly i think if you just google how to start a podcast then you will find already a lot of uh, useful resources i don't have a specific website or url in mind uh, to be honest but what tim and i did um, uh, very often i would say is just asking google right so what is a good podcast hoster um, what microphone would you recommend and then you you read a couple of pages uh, from your google result and then i think you already in in, in good shape because there are podcasts about how to do a podcast. There yeah. are YouTube channels about how to do a podcast. And I think they have all the stuff you need, right, to get started. Nice. Yeah. Oh. And I, I think a second, second part to that answer could be 
I mean, chances are, if you are contemplating creating a podcast, you probably listen already to podcasts yourself. Yeah. And um, pay attention to what you like about specific podcasts and make note of that and use it for your own, right? And yeah. is there a specific way an intro is, is created? Do you like a specific way people are... Or the host is asking a question. I mean, there's people out there like like Tim Tim Ferriss, I would argue, and also Joe Rogan. I mean, obviously, extremely pop popular podcasters. But the way they ask questions, you can learn something from that. They are amazing at it. So you can you can look at these guys and learn something from it and use it on your own and become better. I mean, Ramsey, let me quickly add to that. So I think what we did from the very beginning was not to overcomplicate it, right? So as I said, we, we were sitting down in the office in front of a MacBook and then we just started talking, right? Yeah. And if we listen to it today, we would say from a kind of professional view, it's crap, right? Because the audio is not good and all that stuff. But one thing which is, which is still good is you hear that we love what we are doing, right? And I think that is a very important piece. So if people starting about... Um, having their own podcast, I would say, don't overcomplicate it. Don't think too much about it, right? So get starting doing it and then learn from it. So Tim and I, we also did um, kind of uh, little consulting sessions, right? With people who are doing podcasts very professional or doing moderation on the radio um, after after a year, after one and a half years. So all, all these things. And that helped us a lot. But at the very beginning, I mean, let's get started and just talk about the stuff you really love. And people will, I think people will feel that. Yeah. It's funny. I, so you guys over-prepare, I under-prepare. But for the podcast, you guys start with a MacBook. I bought a microphone. I bought an external recorder. I bought a webcam. Like, I did the opposite of what I usually do. And, uh, you know, we're both here. So <laughs> it the most important thing is just to get started. doesn't matter how you start. The most important thing is to get started. That's, that's awesome. Yes. All right. Um, the last question I usually have is what separates great podcasters from or great SEs from not so great SEs? I'm going to change that and say, what is your favorite podcast to listen to at this point in time? And we'll start with Tim this time. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I truly listen to quite a lot. Um, so it's probably quite tough to pick a favorite. Um, Top I must three. say there's some, there's some German ones. Okay. So I'm not going to mention those because of, Probably will not yield much too much interest. Well, uh, I have I have German uh, subscribers, so if you want to listen to if you want to list one or two or three, or uh, I'll, I'll give you one one German one. Okay. And it's a completely different topic. Um, I mean, I, I've turned off my TV subscription twenty years ago, right? So I don't watch television, I don't watch yeah. the news, nothing like that. But I do obviously still want to know what's happening in the world. So I'm listening to one that is called Die Lage der Nation, State of the Nation, so to say, you could say. Yeah. Um, probably one of the most popular podcasts in Germany. And they obviously talk about politics and, and nationally and internationally. Okay. It's an awesome show. I really love it. Um, <laughs> the other day I subscribed for one uh, that is called... <laughs> Maybe I have to say, censor this one. Okay. It's called, it's called Dear Man, How to Rock Sex, Dating, and Relationships. Okay. Quite an interesting one. It's like four women having a conversation about their first orgasms or whatever. So hold on. <laughs> it's very interesting. Again, you can cut it out if, you, if, if it's not fine. Um, and gen other last recommendation, it's one called Modern Wisdom. This one I really like. It's a UK guy and he's having thought leaders of different fields, whether it's like fitness, whether it's... Uh, professional life, career, authoring a book or cooking, or he's having experts on multiple fields under the show and he's doing a great job. I, I'm curious, how come every time I have a German on the show, we end up talking about sex? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're just very yeah, I don't know. open in that sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, t right. Tim, is, Tim is always talking about things he don't have, so. <laughs> okay. He doesn't have, by the way. Check your grammar. Yeah, What's wrong thank you. you. Yeah, you know that my English is crap, but uh, you always know, you always understand what I really mean. So, uh, but thanks for that. <laughs> Jan, is there a podcast? He makes me better every day. Yeah, so that, that is, I mean, I like that question because um, before Tim said, Jan, let's start our own podcast, I never listened to any podcast, right? So I'm a huge fan of audiobooks. Um, and I think I started in 2013 listening to audiobooks and until 
2013, I listened to 661 audiobooks. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed uh, because I don't read books, right? So I'm, I'm completely in that audiobook thing. He's also and, totally um, humble. Yeah, yeah, true. And uh, so I don't have a favorite podcast. So I, I, I don't have a subscription to, to a single podcast. Um, oh, wow. Okay. When I, when I listen to podcasts, what normally happens is Tim is sending me a WhatsApp and saying, Jan, I listened to that episode of podcast, blah, 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 blah. It's totally amazing. Please listen, right? And then I say, okay, it needs to be amazing because Tim listened to it and is saying it's amazing. So I can listen to it. And uh, from time to time, so there's one where I click into proactively, I would say, and it's called the brutal truth about sales and selling. So that, <laughs> that, that, awesome. that, that, that guy is just so crazy, <laughs> crazy good. I need to say, I also uh, really enjoy his little videos on, on LinkedIn. So that is really entertaining, uh, entertaining to me, but, uh, mainly Tim is my kind of, um, trigger for listening to, to podcasts. So. Okay. So I, I was on George Burns's podcast. He, you and, were. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I invited him to come on mine. So I'm still waiting. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. George, I mean, if you're listening, <laughs> which I doubt, but you know, we're waiting. <laughs> he, he, he's great. Huh? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's just great. And he was an SE. So he, he was an SE at one point in his career. So he has experience with that. Uh, that oh, sounds. Wow. All right. All right. All right, guys, last question of the day. If people want to reach out and connect with you, where can they do that? I think that's an easy one. Um, LinkedIn is probably the, the best place to, to go to, either on, on the Sales Excellence Podcast LinkedIn page, which is like a company page on LinkedIn, or just reach out individually. Yeah, okay. has a LinkedIn. Yeah. I have a LinkedIn. Short right. answer, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I will post the LinkedIn links on my, the show notes. Sounds good. Pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, this was awesome. Lots of fun. Uh, we didn't talk about sales engineering much, but we talked about the benefits of podcasting, which is great. So. I, I, ha I had a great evening. And um, so I don't, maybe Tim, when we interview Ramsey on our podcast, maybe we do it in a different way than we usually do it. Okay. Without preparation. Let's, let's have a discussion. <laughs> let's let's, pre let's prepare know, he, a discussion about uh, it. But well, we already prepared, right? <laughs> <laughs> he, he is the structure guy, as, as, we, all, as we already said. <laughs> no, but in, in, all, in all sincerity, thanks for having us, Ramsey. It, it was a fun conversation. We obviously hope that you Yeah, that was, you, you made my evening 100%. Well, could, could I, take I, something away from I, it. I think that's sad, Jan, but okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't be sad. Don't be sad. I, I appreciate it. Your comment just made my day. How about that? Okay. I like your humor. So, <laughs> okay. All right, guys. We'll, we'll talk soon. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Ramsey. And that was Tim and Yan. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, at least enjoyed listening to the podcast as much as I enjoyed talking to Tim and Yan. They seem to have a great relationship especially since they started off as SE and SE manager. It was great to hear them talk about each other and why they started this together. And they're different personalities. Tim is very organized, very methodical in what he likes to do. Jan is kind of the opposite. He is also organized, but not to the extent that Tim is. So it's great to see how different personalities can work together and balance each other out. It's kind of like the way I am with my wife and the way I was with my salesperson where we work together and we, between the two of us, we're stronger together versus uh, like we're stronger as a whole versus uh, by person. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a rating and review on iTunes if you can figure that out. If you can't figure that out and you want to, let me know so I can write up like a blog post or something on how to put in a review on iTunes or Google Play and all that. Actually, I might do that anyways, now that I think of it. Thank you guys for listening. And I will see you next time for, well, for me, this is Ramsey signing off. <laughs>